much getting returns. So it makes it an attractive place from those three angles to go. So I'll sort of give you, uh, I guess what, what they wanted was my story and what, what we experienced when we break into the Latin market, the Brazilian market, uh, and apply clean technology there. So for us, it involves finding nasty wastewater. So wastewater at industrial processing facilities, of which there are a lot in so that process food products, things like starch or um, ethanol production or alcohols, or even large swine farms or cattle farms that produces wastewater that produces methane. These emissions are just going right now into the atmosphere. There's no regulation. So to give you an example, the Brazilian starch sector, which is centered in Sao Paulo and Sao, Sao Paulo and Paraná, about 80 different producers pushing about 60 million tons of carbon into the atmosphere every year. So that's the opportunity to go and apply this technology. So this is um, a shot of our team at a uh, project site in Paraná, about uh, 400 kilometers from Sao Paulo. So we've got the actual site owner, we've got the uh, owner of the construction company, and then our energy engineer. So we're also pointing to the importance of having a very good team that you trust on the ground in the country. We did some business in Guatemala, we did some business in Panama, and um, a huge lesson learned for us was, yeah, the team on the ground is <laughs> the most important factor. So we put together a team that's done these applications before, developed the wind farms, hydro, and so highly experienced team on the ground there. And we found a good site. So what we're doing is going to this site and capping it with a, basically a, a large tarp, which takes the methane, captures it, runs it through a heat exchanges and a generator, which produces clean energy that can be sold either to the grid. So we're putting clean energy off the grid or back to the producer at this facility, which takes him off of the grid, which he loves, and allows him to produce more. So each of the projects that we're developing now, one to two megawatts of clean energy, depending on size, and about 600,000 tons reduced in carbon. So the impact is threefold, I guess. It's obviously the carbon reduction, which is needed. It's the clean energy, which goes to the producer, making him more economical. Um, and it's uh, remote power as well. So we're getting power distributed throughout these farther reaches outside the main generators within Brazil, um, which is good because about 60% of energy growth, or sorry, energy demand will grow about 60% over the next 20 years. And where is that predicted to happen? It's predicted to happen in the developing world. So they could either put onto the grid coal plants or they could put onto the grid clean power. And so obviously we want to think about. What we found in Brazil as well, so we in getting to this, um, we analyzed about 80 sectors throughout Latin America, six different technologies, 11 different sectors. What we were trying to find was kind of a sweet spot where we could get stable, low risk projects, but a lot of carbon reduction and therefore higher returns. And we found that in Brazil. Brazil gave us the stability. So it's a great investment country. There's a lot of uh, foreign direct investment flowing into Brazil. We first saw The Economist with the <laughs> statue taking off in Rio a few months ago. Um, stable country, larger counterparties to deal with and install this technology, uh, but still fairly low cost in the rural areas. So able to achieve a reduction for a lot cheaper and therefore get a lot better returns in this project. So the way we did it was actually, um, one of the reasons we selected Brazil was I met a guy at uh, an angel investment firm here in Vancouver who was considering moving to Vancouver, but he was Brazilian, he'd been banking in Asia, and um, he ended up back in Brazil. So a very senior person wanted to take advantage of this sort of dynamic that we saw, and became our director in Sao Paulo and built out the team there. So the fact that we've got the team in Canada, the team in Brazil, and the New Zealand technology, allows us to go to these sites and offer them sort of a turnkey solution. So it's, it's a pretty global product or solution that we've built to apply in Brazil, but it works. Benefits to the local producer, allows him to produce a lot more. We've licensed the technology, so we've got the exclusive right to take this into Brazil, which I think is probably important and can give you some good competitive advantages. You can't break into a sector in, say, North America because it's a saturated sector. Maybe there's an opportunity to install that technology somewhere else in the world. And um, today we can do that. So uh, the team we put together has raised about 10 billion in project finance in the last 10 years. So another important part of it was 
because we're going to these sites and saying, we will install this technology for you for free, we just need your effluent. Um, it was important for us to be able to structure the financing to actually install the technology. Uh, the team we put together created a lot of carbon offsets in our years, about 22 years of my experience in the marketplace. And um, a benefit of this team and the structure we built to take advantage of these dynamics is that we're transferring capital into Latin America, helping it develop in a positive way. The most important factor, the technology is great, it's been around 30 years, we like to sit best technology in the world, fine, but um, the team in-country is, is by far our greatest asset, I would say.